This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Gurridge versus Carter. Mr. Gurridge, you and your girlfriend have been together almost a year, and you're living together? Yes, ma'am. And what I note from the court file is that there's a 19-year age difference between you and the defendant. Is that correct? That's correct. Why do you think your lovely young girlfriend is cheating? I think she's cheating because uh, she has a tell as in uh, when she gets mad or she's trying to divert her, the, the argument away, she'll throw her hands up and stomp out of the room. It's like a defense mechanism. So you believe when she does that and stomps out the room, she's not telling the truth? Very much so. And does this happen regularly? Probably every time that we argue. I am completely honest with him about everything. I have nothing to hide. Well, he says that you have a tell and that he knows when you're not being honest. So there have at least been a few occasions where you haven't been honest because otherwise he wouldn't know what your tell is. I think he's reading my tell wrong. Personally, I throw my hands up and I stomp away because I'm sick of fighting. Why sit there and keep the fight going? Why sit there and try and tell somebody something that they're not believing you about? Why sit there and be told I'm lying when I'm not? All Believe right. it or not, she starts fights. She it's, starts fights? She starts fights just to leave the house. There's this one incident when she came home with a friend and I had some friends over. I go sit out by the garage just to get away from everything and uh, she comes out and starts bringing up random stupid stuff. I get to the point to where I take off. Okay. So I'm gone for a, a few hours. And is everybody gone at that point? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's, she's home by herself. Right. I take off. And when I come back, can I show you something? Sure. You have an exhibit? Yes. All right. Go to the plasma, please. When I come back, okay, usually she, she sleeps in a long shirt and, and shorts or whatever, you know? Okay. When I come back, She's wearing this nightie. Do you guys want to open the door? Sleeping. And uh, she has no bottoms on. No, excuse me. I'm going to say something. Hold on. Hold on. Finish. We'll get to you. She has on a nightie and no underwear. Yes, ma'am. And what, what time do you come back? Uh, it's about 7 in the morning. So you've been out overnight. Not all night. But it's, it's overnight. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. And you come home. Does she wear that for you? The mm, blue? I, no. Had you ever seen Actually, that before? Off, that's not no. even realistic, okay? You, I hold, thought, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We, we Ms. Carter, just Ms. Carter. the first thing I found. Ms. Carter, we will give you a chance. We're going to give you a chance, but we want to hear his side. You'll get your chance. I promise you. Then I'll go. So, like, when I'm not going to sit here Ms. and be bad. Ms. Carter. Thank you. Please let me go. We've told you we're going to give you, you an opportunity your chance. Yeah. to talk. Just but hold me my opportunity now. No, we run this courtroom. Like no, we run this courtroom. Step behind the podium. You will get your chance. We want to hear him. All right. The question that was pending. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that nighty before? No. She's never worn that with you? No. All right, so you come home. She's... Is she awake? Is she asleep? Where no, is she? she? She's, she's sleeping, and... I go into the bathroom, and when I come out, <clears throat> she's, uh, she's waking up. All right, okay. come back to your party. Now is your turn. Thank you. First off, I needed to do laundry, so I had no clean underwear. So if he actually paid attention, he would have known I had no underwear on in the first nightgown. Second off, I puked on my nightgown. I'm half asleep, and it's dark. Okay, I'm not going to wear a short shirt when I have no underwear on. I'm going to find something longer. That was the first thing I found that was clean, and threw it on and went back to bed. So you did not put that on for a lover? No, and I figured, okay, anyone comes to my house, it's gonna be him. So I don't have to worry about anyone else coming and seeing me like that. If anyone sees me like that, it's gonna be him. Did What's you explain deal? that to your boyfriend? Several times. And you didn't believe that? No. The hands came up and... After the fifth time, what would you do? Okay. But you're not buying she any has of so that. so many clothes. There's other incidences, too. You know? All right, I was about to say, do you have something else? Yeah, we're walking down the back, the, our little back driveway. Okay, there's tall grass, right? Um, our house is, like, surrounded by poison oak, you know, the, like a barrier thing, whatever. That's quite a barrier. Well, she comes up with poison oak. Arms, legs, behind, you know? And it's like, how do you get poison oak on your behind if you're not... So, how do you... you go ahead. You asked the she question. Got I couldn't tell you. She said she got it from her mom's cat. What is she doing with the cat? <laughs> okay, uh, wait. Before you go there, how do you think she got it? Because you have a thought in your mind. What is that thought? 
I think she was playing in the poison oak with someone or something. Who was gonna have sex in poison oak, though? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Cutler, I can't... I now, we've heard, in this court, we've heard about people having sex in strange places. True. I will gra- I will grant you that. Grant. I don't know that we've heard of anybody having sex in poison oak. Okay, tell me, you, what is your testimony regarding the poison oak? How did you get poison First oak off, the all poison over poison oak you? originated right here on my arms from holding the cat. Okay. Okay, I got fair skin. I get it easy. Okay. Also, he's always working, like, in the weeds in poison oak. He doesn't get it. So I think I either got it from him or the cat. I know I sure in the hell didn't get it from having sex out in poison oak. Okay, well, let me ask you this. How does it go from your arm to your backside? I have no idea. Like, honestly. You you want me to tell you? I have no idea. Like, straight up, I don't. Sorry. Do you see why your proposition doesn't sound nearly as logical as his, that you got it because you were laying down in it? I would have grabbed a blanket or something. I'm not that stupid to go have sex out in the poison oak and, like, come on. I don't know. I've lived in the mountains my whole life. Like, I have some common sense. I know how bad I get poison oak. Like, but no, and why would I go out there? Come on, like... I would go in my car first. Like, seriously, think of something better. <laughs> All right, but you, well, you don't believe, believe her. No. And have you found anything else to make you think um, that your girlfriend is, in fact, cheating? There was a, another incident where I was putting a radio in a car, and um, I was looking for a screwdriver, and I looked in the center council, and there were, like, five packs of condoms. Ooh. And she says, uh, oh, those are old. Here, take them. And she gave them to me. I was like, okay, and I just... Throw them away. Do you all use condoms? No. Okay, Miss uh, Carter, are you riding around town with condoms in your car? Actually, I was. They were in there from when I first got my car. There was so much stuff in my center console, okay? Like, I would have had a dig to find them, and they were old. If he looked at them, they were expired, okay? <laughs> That's before I even met him. Like, I'm sorry I don't clean out my center console in my car very much. Well, you know, it really sounds like you were ready to roll at all times <laughs> with them in your car. <laughs> Well, she did mention that if it wasn't outside with a poison oak, it and might be in her the car. car. So, is that... Okay, that does sound pretty bad, but it honestly... It does! Yeah. Honestly, no, they were expired. They were seriously, like, from when I first got that car. No, so, if he would have looked at the date, they, they were expired. They came with the car. They, they came with the car. car. <laughs> that, that's okay. some dealer prep right there. There you go. All right, so, do you have any other so, reasons to believe she's cheating? Can I show you something else? Absolutely. Step over to the plasma again. He came prepared for court today. Yeah, got his evidence lined we up. We got two plasmas. Let's see what you got. I came home, okay? And we live on a, on, on a dusty road. It's really oh. dusty. So we're coming down the road. I'm walking up to the door, and um, something caught my eye on her car. Okay. And I look over, and I see handprints on her car. And the fender is all shiny. This is the hood of her car. That's, right the, that's the top of the car. Yes. And then we go down to the, the fender. quarter panel. This part you're saying is clean. I can see a reflection, so you're saying it's yeah, clean. Yeah. Well, there's a different shot that you can see the handprints better. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so it looks like you've got some handprints on the there's top ha- of the car. Right. Which you can see in the dust, but on the right. side on the, of the car, it's on the fender, it's all shiny. Clean and shiny. Yeah. So that doesn't make sense. Why would the top be dusty and not the side? Well, she's, um, you know? <laughs> oh. So, Are you saying that she, her body or clothes rub that side rub clean? Rub clean, yeah. And then the dust up here is her handprints. It is. How do you... I mean, if I saw that, I wouldn't jump to that conclusion. Okay, well... well I had a girlfriend, okay? Okay. And, and this happened to me before. <laughs> okay. I put her out on the hood, and the hand patterns were the same. All right, so yeah. you've seen this so before. I, yes, I've seen it before. So this isn't speculation on your part. You saw this, and, and you were like, oh, I know what that is. Yeah. I recognize that. Then you've done that. Okay, oh. I, yeah. I, now, now you're getting a visual? I got a visual. You got a visual. I want to get it out the, my head. Put it in the car. Yeah. Ham- look, look, uh-huh. watch, look. I'm looking. Handprints on the car, you know, <laughs> in the dust, but this part is clean. I can't. You can't? I just, okay. I cannot. All right, thank you so Mr. much. Gertz. All right. Miss Carter, you've already mentioned that, look, I wouldn't go outside with this poison oak. I was going I would do it in my car if I had to. Mm-hmm. How do you have handprints 
on a dusty car, but the side of your car is clean. I have no idea how the hand marks got on my car. I thought he was talking about like where I had my bags on my car and I grabbed them and like it swished or something. And I walked out and I seen that. Okay, and then I you, said maybe. You, you do have to admit that it's odd that the top of your car is dusty and the side of your car is, you know, it's actually got a gleam to it. And we have Mr. Gurich's near expert testimony that he's seen <laughs> that pattern before. <laughs> And I mean, it's not just one handprint. It's then like maybe it was handprints was... from him. Well, well, that's a good point. Did you have sex on your girlfriend's truck? That's a no. All right. So you're saying that's... it's not you? No, it's not and, me. And not anybody you've been with. And the next day, the hood was cleaned. Yeah, I washed my car the next day. All right. So. So you got rid of the evidence. Basically. You um, actually, I got rid of the accusation and the reminder that it was probably him, some girl on the hood of my car. So that's what you thought? I don't know if someone comes at you accusing you of something and you have no idea and you go out and see that and that's what they're saying it's you doing, what would you expect? How low of a person do you think I am to think I would lie about stuff like that or do something like that to you? Like, how little of me must you think, honestly? I'm just going off. You're going I... off your past experiences. You're there not you going go off there. anything that I've done. Past experiences. I, I've, I've experienced it. So, Mr. Garrett, you're here to get some answers to questions. I am. Ms. Carter, you're here to prove that you haven't done any of these things you're being accused of. Is that correct? More so prove to him that I have been telling him the truth. Exactly. Yeah. So, if it comes out that you are, in fact, telling the truth, are you willing to move forward with Mr. Garrett? Absolutely, or I wouldn't be here. All right. All right. And to address Mr. Gurich's concerns about your infidelity, Ms. Carter was ordered to take a polygraph examination, and we have those results. Ron, would you please escort certified polygraph examiner Kendall Show into the courtroom? Good day, Mr. Show. How good are day, you? Good day, Your Honor. Thank you. Very it's good. good to see you. Right. Well, I noticed when you walked in that Miss Carter, she looked down, she looked at you, she looked down again. Are you nervous? Not at all. So you're ready to do this? Yeah, I'm a nervous person, but like, no, not at all. Mr. Garage, are you ready for the results either way? Yes, I am. All right. You asked Miss Carter, on the night Mr. Garage found you asleep in your lingerie, did you have sexual intercourse with another man? What was her response? She said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being truthful. Good girl. <laughs> All right. You asked Miss Carter, were the handprints that Mr. Gurridge found on the hood of the car made by you having sexual intercourse with another man? What was her response? She said, no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined she was being truthful. <laughs> you look like I knew this. Yeah, your expression hasn't changed. Not at all. Right. I'm... Mr. Garrett, you looked a little surprised on that I one. I am. But happily surprised, right? Yes. All right. One more question. You asked Ms. Carter, other than the one time Mr. Garrett knows about, have you had sexual intercourse with any other man since you've been in an exclusive relationship? What was her response to that question? She said, no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined she was being truthful. <laughs> All right, Mr. Garage, what you gonna say to her? I'm sorry for judging you wrong, not trusting you. And um, I will make better judgments on your actions. And uh, I, I hope this will 
prosper into something good to get married or something? Or is that is that a proposal I heard? No, not a proposal. <laughs> oh, I was about to say. Not a <laughs> you all are in a new relationship. You've been together for about a year. You've got a lot more years ahead of you than you've got behind you. If you're going to enjoy those years you have ahead of you, there's got to be some trust. I have nothing to hide. Mr. Gerich, I heard you say that you're going to have to be different in your judgment. And what I would say to you is stop judging. So I hope that you all will take advantage of the court resources we have so you can figure out how to open up and keep open those lines of communication. That's the only way these things work. This is the case of Baker versus Cradle. You all have been in a relationship for three years and were contemplating getting married until issues of infidelity came up. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me why you opened your case today, Ms. Baker? I opened my case because I figured out, I found out that my girlfriend was sending naked pictures to her ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> accidentally. Uh, accidentally. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're gonna come back to yeah, accidental okay. photos. Okay. And you think because of that, there must be something going on. Something. It has to be. I feel like there's something going on. She's been lying about the situation with her ex-girlfriend, talking about their friends, but she's been asking her ex-girlfriend to send her pictures. Well, we, we both have exes in our lives. She has exes that are friends, I have exes that are friends. Yeah, but I didn't send my ex a naked picture by accident and then tweet about it. Oh. Oh. Okay, tell me about this accidental naked photo. I was texting on the iPhone. I'm not an iPhone user. And I went to go text my ex, and it was in my role, and I swiped up, and it sent. And so it but, sent to your former. But, Miss Cradle, <laughs> you, you <laughs> accidentally <laughs> took off all your clothes. You no, accidentally no, no. posed the, the, for the picture. Me taking the picture was intentional. I took the picture intentionally because I sent it to her first. Is that true? Did you get the picture? I did, yes. So she sent it to you. Yes. When you swiped up. Swiped up and it sent... <laughs> I know it sounds... I know it sounds crazy, but it's the truth. So what do you want to show Ms. Baker today as a result of these proceedings? Um, I just want to prove that I've been faithful and I have no intention of being unfaithful. And I, I really want her to see how ridiculous this is, this whole... All of these allegations. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's just kind of fishy, seriously. The, the okay, whole why is it fishy? fishy? Why do you have these issues with her <laughs> and this ex? Well, initially, she told me that they were going to be friends, and then she asked me, was I comfortable with it? And I said, no, I'm not. And then she went behind my back, and she's like, okay, I'm not talking to her anymore. Okay. But then I see you texting her. Yarna, I went on tour for a couple of weeks, and I was out of town. And every time I go out of town, it just seems like I find something in her phone dealing with other women. It's but, casual but conversation. But on top is... of it, Yarna, I have evidence of the tweet. I have it. Ron, would you get that piece of Please. Yes, Yarna. I tweeted it because it was funny to me. So, th I, w I, I wasn't ashamed. I wasn't trying to hide it. That's why I tweeted it. But this is your proof that she didn't do it accidentally. Right. Because she said, y'all ever send news to the wrong person by mistake? <laughs> no. It me was a joke. either. It was a okay. joke. It was a joke. This I... don't look like a joke. This <laughs> looks like you... I wouldn't have tweeted about it if, if I really was trying to be sneaky. Twitter is a public platform. Well, no, I know what Twitter right. is. And that's <laughs> why I find this crazy yeah. that you would put this out here, particularly if she's questioning you about your intent with that picture. I thought it was funny. It was funny to me. Oh, ha, 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 <laughs> all the way here, right? right? <laughs> Well, Ms. Baker, what I want to know is, why are you going through her phone? Because she has a history of just lying to me, and I just didn't no, trust her. No, that's not true. I don't trust her. That's not true. Has the relationship always had this level of distrust? I mean, take me back to the beginning. What was it like when you all first got together? Well, when we first got together, we were very close. We spent a lot of time with one another. But when my singing career started picking up and I started traveling, things got really rocky between us. What happened? I mean, what was your relationship like? We have a lot of fun. We go out all the time. We travel a lot together. We met... Uh, we, were, we were friends, actually, on social media. That's how I know she's a big flirt, because she flirted with me. <laughs> <laughs> 
And, um, and you like that when I, she flirted with I, you? I did, I did. She came to my it's concert. It's not really flirting, it's just communication. It's flirting. It's okay, it's okay to flirt. It's flirting. It's okay to flirt. I flirt with Miss Cutler all the time. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Before we got together, since we've been together. And I like it. It's yeah. a good thing. For the most part, besides the lion. <laughs> For the most part. Okay, Miss Crater, what did you fall in love with? She was just very nurturing, very caring, very gentle with me. Like, we, we, we pretty much are the same. Like, we have the same principles. We have the same passions. We believe in the same things. So, I, it's rare that I met somebody that I felt like was my equal. Oh, wow. Okay, so there was a real connection yeah, between you. Definitely. You found your mutual. Right. You all are vibing. You're having a good time. You're enjoying each other. When did it start to fall apart? I feel like it started to fall apart when I started traveling more and we started having money issues. Okay. And it seemed well, money like... Money issues would do it. Money issues yeah. is a yeah. big one. I mean, all the studies suggest that. And I wasn't around a lot and I felt like she just needed someone to talk to or, you know, just wanted to emotionally lean on her exes and the, the girls from the dating They weren't always exes. Yeah, there were girls they, from they the dating app. They were always exes. Well, it didn't okay. matter whether okay. they were always exes, does it? Yeah. Well, it, I don't... There's th nothing wrong with having friends. Look, we travel a lot, too. When we're together, you gotta, you gotta make it count. <laughs> you gotta make it count. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do special things. One of the things that um, I've done in the past, just an example, is when I'm gonna go away, like I'll leave that morning, he'll go to work. I'll try to make sure I leave after him, and I put his favorite little candy on his pillow. So when he gets home that night, he's got a little something about me. It's okay. not big, but it's important. It's meaningful. Again, what you did to get somebody are the things you have to do to keep them. You hear that? There's nothing what? wrong with having friends. The problem is when friends cross over to being something more than friends. You, there's a physical part and there's an emotional part. Right. And either one, it's devastating. Because if you're emotionally connected with somebody, that means you don't have the energy to put into me. Right. right. And if you are physically connected with somebody, I'm just mad. Right. Overarching all of that, is that this is communication on a dating app. Yeah. Meaning you're looking well, for I, somebody. Can I clear up the dating app? She's a singer, I play bass. So we used to have a jam session at our house. I used the dating app to market because we specifically were marketing to the LGBT communities. Well, what kind of music are you trying to make? Right. No, it, it wasn't the music, it was, it was the cause. We were working on this particular cause well, at the time. how about the poetry? The messages between the girl and you were talking about poetry. She intentionally was reaching out to someone. I saw that the girl had liked her picture and that she had liked her picture. And we had nothing musical going on at the time together. So there was no reason for you to be reaching out to someone. But I'm, I'm 3,000 miles away and it's 11 o'clock at night and you're saying hey to this girl. That's kind of fishy. Hey. And you find this out hey. when you get back and go <laughs> yes. through her phone. Hey. And I had dreams. And, but while I was gone, I had dreams that she was cheating. And then the next day... <laughs> <laughs> dreams. You had dreams. dreams. Dreams are nightmares. It was a nightmare. And it was just a hey. <laughs> Only a hey. All right. And the first one may not be that innocent. It may be, hey. Hey. No. You know, it was only one why. One why. Hey. No I hey. I just say hey. It, it was just one like, why. Hey. <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night, Hey doesn't always mean hey. Yeah, well, it means you want to make some make hay. Make some hay. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> a roll in the hay, you, but it yeah. ain't just hay. Now, I wasn't looking for them for anything romantic. I was looking for them for a particular reason. But when I when asked people... her about it, Your Honor, she told me, oh, I never did that. Oh, I never said that. I wasn't using it for dating. I was using it for marketing. So why was your status single? And it's, what? I, I probably made my profile when I was single. No, we were together when you made the profile. <laughs> All right, because so... it was for the music. All right, so Miss Baker, it does, it has a fishy, it's, it's, I'm curious. Do you have something more concrete yes. to support your position? Yes, I do. All right, tell me about that. So the third tour that I just came back from, I was gone for about two weeks, and when I got into the house, I went to the bathroom, and I saw some prints on the mirror. And I thought that that was kind of fishy. So I asked her, I said, Stacy, why is there handprints on the mirror? And she said, oh. I'm, okay. I was trying to clean it. <laughs> Your Honor, she doesn't clean. So you brought us evidence of this, correct? Yes. And it's at the screen. Would yes. you step over to it, please? Okay. Please explain to us what we're looking at. Okay, so this right is my now. bathroom. Uh-huh. And then on the mirror, there's these little prints. There it is. There's a handprint. So it was like, it just seemed like somebody may have been... Bent over. Well, well, Mr. Cutler. And you think so? I think she was 
somebody was getting pleasure from behind. Oh. Well, there it is. <laughs> if you didn't know, you know now. now you know. Hey. Yeah. If you step back to the okay. podium. Go ahead, Mr. Cutler. Miss Cradle. How did those... <laughs> Do you, wait, 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 wait. Do you see the handprints? I see the handprints. Okay. Those, Do you see are, the problem with the handprints? Hands. Those are pretty big hands. They don't look like <laughs> any hands I would be interested in. <laughs> That's like... Well, how did you... How do you explain those handprints on the mirror? I don't know. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even notice them until she brought my attention to them. And when she brought my attention to them, I had no idea she was alluding to me cheating. But did you tell her you were cleaning? If she's... I, I guess. I don't remember. She honestly. doesn't remember a lot. <laughs> this is not helping your position, dear. I probably looked at them and thought I'd need to clean them after she said that, but no, I didn't... I don't remember saying I was clean. Well, let me ask you, did you tweet about that? No. Because <laughs> those are... How do you... Yeah, no, Mr. Cutler. I'm just trying she, to... She, no, it's like this. Like... It's like that. <laughs> you... You wouldn't know about that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have. <laughs> And so, all of these accusations, all of these issues, from the handprints to the tweet, are having you question about your relationship and even considering marriage. Is that correct? Yes. To get some further perspective on this, we've asked a friend of the court to come in and talk to us, someone who's been through similar situations of cheating. At this time, the court would like to call R&B singer and cast member of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Ms. Ariane Davis. Ron, please escort her into the courtroom. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Good day. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? We're great. Okay. And Ms. Davis, you've had some similar experiences to our plaintiff and defendant in this case, correct? Yes. Well, have you ever been cheated on by any of your girlfriends? Absolutely. Unfortunately, I have. And I can say that uh, <laughs> the experience was kind of ugly. It got real ugly. I walked in <gasps> on. Oh, no. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to say to you, Ms. Baker. When you go looking for stuff, you find it. I was looking so, for stuff. So, but if you know, if you were going to stay, then you shouldn't have been going through it. But if you were going to just... If you were going to leave her after finding what you found, then okay, I get it. But I'm not going to go looking for something knowing that I'm going to still be here. Do you have any advice for Miss Cradle? <sighs> oh, my God, you... I was looking and, you know, hearing the story and stuff. Where did those prints come from if you don't clean? Were you there that day? I just have a question. I, I yeah, I was there. Know. I was there. But if you don't clean, why would you say that? I don't know. When she, when she brought it up, I honestly thought she was talking about a ghost. <laughs> like, it, it, so it sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy. I, I didn't assume that she was assuming I was cheating, so I'm thinking it's some horror movie stuff, like some prints appearing on my mirror. <laughs> All right, so but I do you really want to be with her? Yes. I just would suggest to you, if you want to make this work, make it work. And if you don't, don't. It's simple. Love shouldn't be that complicated. And you fight for what you love. So if y'all love each other, y'all got to fight for each other. If this is where you really want to be. Thank you, Ms. Davis. My pleasure. I think we've heard enough testimony, seen enough evidence. Here's what we're looking at. We've got you sending naked pictures accidentally... Uh, you're on a dating app, which you say you don't use for dating, but it's a dating app. And we've got handprints on a mirror in a compromising position. And all of this has led you to believe that she's cheating. Yes. And if you find out she is cheating, the relationship is over. Absolutely. And you're done. Absolutely. This court has done a full and complete investigation to determine, is she cheating? At this time, the court would like to call former military interrogator Lena Sisko. Ron, please escort her into the courtroom. Yes, Shauna. Step right over to the monitor, please. Good day, Ms. Sisko. How are you? I am well. How are you, Your Honor? We're, we're good. Thank Great. you for being here. Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? Yes, Your Honor. I am a former certified Department of Defense military interrogator. I have trained law enforcement personnel, military, government agency personnel in interrogation techniques and interviewing. Tell us, please, what you did to investigate this case. I first had the accused write a witness statement, and from that, I analyzed it to see if there was any indicators of deception. So, with your experience, if anybody can get to the bottom of this, it's you. Yes, Your Honor. 
And what were your initial findings? So I saw a lot of nonverbal and verbal indicators of truthfulness. Hmm. Right. Okay. And what did you further learn? Did you learn anything else as you went through the process? I did, Your Honor. Miss Cradle willingly admitted to sending nude pictures to her ex-girlfriend, but accidentally. And when I was reading her statement, her written statement, at first I had a lot of doubts, but during the interview, she gave me really truthful responses. Okay. She has also admitted to seeking attention from other females because she's lacking that mm. from her girlfriend. So ultimately, what was your conclusion about Miss uh, Cradle's truthfulness? As a person who has years in interrogation experience and detecting deception, I believe that Miss Cradle is being truthful and that she has not cheated on her girlfriend. Aww. So now that you've heard this information, what do you have to say to Miss Cradle? Please forgive me. I Aww. forgive you. I love forgive you. Me. Thank you. <laughs> Show some love. Show some love. <laughs> now, Miss Baker, I hope you heard a couple of other things. You got to keep the fires burning. Yes. Whatever you did to get her, you got to do to keep her. And that goes both ways. Oh, it, it goes both ways. <laughs> it goes, so you yeah. need to show her a little right. love. That's right. best. You know, if you tweet and tweet her. Right. <laughs> I tweet about her all the time. All right. I show her love all and the time. And if, if you're feeling neglected, just tell her, look, I'm feeling a little neglected. Communication goes a long way. Miss yeah, Davis, me thank you so much My for your pleasure. words of wisdom My to pleasure. these young ladies. My pleasure. And I'm glad to see you guys work it out. Thank you. Go to therapy thank if you need to, too. We have counseling available to you. Go and talk to them. Okay. And as we say in this courtroom, do not cheat yourself out of an opportunity to have a happy, trust-filled, loving relationship. Court is adjourned. <laughs>